all right guys got a video for you here this is gonna be a long one so be ready for it um i got an enormous stack of cds and lp some shirts and some random other merch to go through so i'm just gonna cut on into it because i don't want this to be more than a half an hour long um we're listening to in the background is Braun. this one here this is where the leading dawn meets iron shore it's a pretty keyboard heavy kind of atmospheric black metal record um probably in more of the epic territory with a little bit of that depressive soundscape to it really really cool record big fan definitely check this out if you haven't i don't particularly remember where these guys are from but uh it's awesome i really big i really dig super heavy keyboards sounds really really good um so yeah beyond that i'm gonna start it off with some t-shirts uh so the first thing i got here is a t-shirt from the american kind of black metal band pretty similar to this uh epic kind of dungeon synthy black metal moon and azure shadow uh from la that's the front of the t-shirt i picked up a special edition i really like this back sigil uh, the special edition of the Age of Darkness and Frost that came out 2019, I believe, something like that. Uh, but yeah, so this is a t-shirt that came with it. Got two more t-shirts here. Uh, they're both from the same band from Canada called Begotten. This is my favorite of the two shirts. This is the cover of If All You Have Known Is Winter. I believe it's an EP. Um, really, really awesome t-shirt. Just kind of some snowy trees with a noose. I really, really like the logo. It's cool. It's pretty to the point. Uh, but it's got some little stuff to make it its own. Kind of like that. Yeah, the dude hanging from the tree there. It's pretty gnarly stuff. It's a really, really awesome band from Canada. Still a little wet from washing them. Uh, this is the other one. This is the Nothing Worth Remembering t-shirt. Pretty similar concept. A little less grim looking. And in the back, some lyrics from a tune I'm imagining. There are no reasons to stay. Life drags either or ever onward with a mind full of memories and nothing worth remembering. So yeah, cool t-shirts. Uh, you'll see some stuff for theirs later on in the video too. Um, so after that, I got some random merch. I got this patch from Begotten. It's like a canvas crap patch. I kind of hate these patches, to be honest with you. But I'm going to roll with it anyway. I really love their logo. Like I said, you get a little bit better look there. If it focuses ever. There you go. But yeah, Begotten. Great, great stuff. They also sent me this little postcard cool little handwritten note really really good stuff uh so i also with that moon and azure shadow special edition got this enamel pin of the logo with this amazing artwork on the card um yeah it's really really cool i like their logo i like that it's legible that's a rare sight especially in this kind of black metal stuff uh so that's it for the merch now i got one lp and then it's going to be cds the rest of the video this is the age of darkness and frost lp uh limited to 300 copies i'm gonna pull it out and let you guys see it this is the just the front jacket here really cool album cover back cover I really love this printed enter here. Really cool with these, uh, with the lyrics. Here's a dude behind it right here. I forgot his name. He doesn't have a stage name. He just kind of rolls with his real name, which is pretty cool because, you know, everybody feels the need to make up some nonsensical garbage to go by. So that's kind of nice for a change to switch it up. Uh, wonderful, wonderful looking LP. It's one of my favorite ones in my collection right here green and black with some white splatter really really matches the album cover a lot and i'm kind of a sucker for that I'm not sure which side i like quite more yet 
Did you see this one, Johan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really like that one a lot. Yeah, really cool. My girlfriend also collects records, so she appreciates a good looking LP, I guess. But yeah, this is a this is really really good, kind of epic summoning esque black metal with some really heavy heavy keyboards. Uh, I'd say like half the record is borderline dungeon synth. Or I saw Marty Worm talk about this record, and he uh, he called it winter synth, which I don't I don't know what that really means, but it sounds cool, so I'm gonna roll with that. So, Moon and Azure Shadow. So, CDs from here on out. Uh, these first few are from a seller I purchased from on eBay. Should be good. Dripping in my beard like usual. First thing I got here is Breeding the Spawn by Suffocation. Uh, Suffocation's one of my favorite death metal bands. Easy. I know it's pretty entry level stuff, but honestly I could not care less. It's so so good there's just something so catchy and so fun about this kind of brutal death metal um it's they have things to latch on to rather than chuggy riffs and like some of the slam bands do but this is obviously the blueprint for that style entirely uh it's something i really do appreciate it's one of the bands i could put on at any time and just enjoy the crap out of so summoning greeting the spawn just trying to collect all this stuff basically i'll get there eventually next oh man so i saw this album cover many years ago going to an exclusive company uh, and if you're from the midwest you know them i would hope uh, if not it is a chain of used and new record stores um and they're really really awesome so i saw this album cover there and i could never remember the name of it until I was scrolling through this guy's thing, or this guy's uh, for sale page on eBay, and I recognized it. And it is Leviathan's Desire by Protector. Never have I ever heard anybody mention Protector in any videos, uh, which is a tragedy for me. It's really, really awesome, really, really heavy, kind of death thrash, more on the death metal side. Uh, closer to that sadist sound definitely has some serious callbacks to some of that early creator stuff especially the pleasure to kill era uh it's really visceral it's really feral and it's just great and i love the aesthetics the band puts on it's just really 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 good stuff so this is the ep which is four tracks and then it has a bunch of bonus tracks and i believe it is their other ep uh from early in their career this is uh not telling me on the back cover here but yeah protector top shelf stuff next filling in holes bathory with under the sign of the black mark been meaning to pick up all the bathroom material i'm slowly chipping away at it piece by piece here um this is probably the general consensus of being the best bathory album which is not my opinion but uh whatever Great, great tunes on here, though. Equal Man Thorn's been covered a bunch. I think Revenge played it. Uh, or maybe it was Black Witchery. It might have been both. I don't really know. Uh, but it's a great, great tune. I think my favorite my favorite one on here is 13 Candles or uh, Woman of Dark Desire. Great stuff. Another Bathory. Twilight of the Gods. Absolutely amazing, amazing album. Super epic huge enormous soundscape and it's slow uh it's a continuation and a proper evolution from the previous stuff like hammerheart before he started getting a little stinky for a little bit there with requiem and octagon um but this was a great note to kind of stop for a little bit while he went and did that weird corthon project uh that he was doing um but yeah it's a great great record I'm sure all of you guys have heard this, but if you haven't, To Enter Your Mountain's a great tune. Uh, and the the beginning, Twilight of the Gods, it's like a, 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 either a 9 or an 11 minute track, and it's just super epic. Definitely go listen to this if you haven't, for whatever weird reason you may have. Another band absolutely nobody mentions, uh, and I think that is an absolute tragedy, 
I think this band should be mentioned in the same breath as Dissection and uh, bands like that, of that early kind of Black Death sound, the melodic Black Death. This is Necrophobic with their album Dark Side from 1997. It's another Black Mark press, or Black Mark release, I mean. Um, it is basically the stylist, the style of Dissection, but leaning more towards death metal, while Dissection leans more towards black metal. Seems to be thunderstorming out there. I see a flash in the background. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a great record. I've been hunting this down for some time now, and this is actually what started this little cart here uh, on eBay. So yeah, definitely go listen to this if you haven't. It's, yeah, Swedish death metal with some hefty black metal influence. Next, classic kind of thrash, more of the angry style thrash. Morbid Saint with uh, Spectrum of Death. Fun fact, this is recorded about a half hour away from my house. Back in 1990, 92, something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head. I really like this old school looking disc. It looks really, really good. Uh, I think we need to bring back this look in metal. We really need to bring back the belly shirt. I don't know what the deal is. But yeah, this is a great one. Lock Up Your Children's a fun one to open up with. Uh, Crying for Death, Scars, Assassin, Beyond the Gates of Hell. Come on now. This is a classic one. This definitely goes along with Protector and stuff like that. But this is probably a little bit more old school than Protector is. Protector's definitely got a lot of the death metal tinge. Well, this still kind of borders on that, that 80s thrash style. Last one from that little lot there. Uh, this is A Twist in the Myth by Blind Guardian. This is the Russian pressing. Um, out on like Irond or something. Or Dark City. Or, yeah, so I don't, I don't really know. I don't really understand how this layout on the back is made. And this jewel case feels weird. It's like a little bit too long. But, uh, you know, I'm a big, big fan of all the Blind Guardian. And this has got to be one of the weaker Blind Guardian albums, I gotta say. But, you know, that's like, that's comparing gold bars, basically. So, yeah, here's the CD tray. It's got this weird shape on it, which also tells me that it's not from mainland Europe or America, uh, which, whatever. But, yeah, great disc tray. It's a great record. I mean, Fly was like the, was the the single off this one and i also have a t-shirt of this so i guess i should love it but it is a great record i would definitely recommend it to anybody who wants to get into any kind of power metal uh it was the last time i'm mentioning this band for this video i hope this is moon and azure shadow with the age of darkness and frost this is the a5 digipack version uh limited to i don't remember the limitation on this but nonetheless it's amazing and it is by far one of my favorite disc prints ever. Right there. It's basically a pencil drawing version of the album cover. Or maybe they just took that and made it a negative of the album cover. There's the dude behind the band right there. I don't have, this is actually my only A5 Digipack. Uh, and I'm really glad to have it. Uh, yeah, it's out of Repose Records. They did all this and took forever to get here but you know i would expect nothing with international shipping but i'm going to tell you right now this is one of my favorite album covers ever it is so absolutely cool and you guys already know anything that reminds me of skyrim i'm all about it and that's 100 percent what this does this is a great record for playing video games if you play video games if not whatever moon and azure shadow next um, Muspelgenheimer. I have absolutely no idea how to properly say this band's name, but this is a Danish black metal band with some serious ambience to it. Um, it's their first two demos put into a compilation, uh, and it's in this weird kind of slipcase double digipack deal, like this. Here's a slipcase, and then here is the two demos. They're both really raw, and it's tough to listen to, like, in a car. So this is definitely a home listen. Um, 
because you guys know you don't you're not jamming lead tapas in the car or anything like that uh it's not that raw but it's it's decently raw and it's cool it's pretty keyboard heavy it's decently grim and if you like stuff like uh, a lot of those swedish bands like beketh nexamu and stuff like that i think you would definitely be able to get down with this uh the full length for me was a lot cooler than these demos but you know that's kind of the point of demos is it's an idea as to what's going on so if you have not heard of these guys definitely check it out here is the spine so you could figure out how to spell that name definitely check that out if you haven't next forlorn citadel with songs of mooring uh forlorn citadel is another one of these kind of atmospheric ep epic black metal bands um and this is a demo compilation of the first two demos being songs of morning and dusk dusk was the first demo that came out in or in 2017 and songs of morning is a demo from 2018 um so dusk is a completely instrumental kind of dungeon synth and uh ambient ish more dungeon synth style uh demo and then songs of morning is more of that epic summoning worship style stuff um these are these guys i found out about them based off of the moon and azure shadow band looking on the metal archives and looking at similar artists and i went and checked it out um and the logo is very much so the same almost as the caladan brood logo and if you know me that's one of my favorite metal records of all time so if you remind me of caladan brood you're probably in good shape in my eyes so yeah, Forlorn Citadel. Four CDs by the band I was talking about earlier. This is Begotten. Um, this is If All You Have Known Is Winter. Got it signed by all the dudes in the band. They seem like nice fellows with uh, quite the good taste in songwriting and black metal. Then, And the Wind Cries Death. Also signed up front. Thank you guys again if somehow you managed to see this. Um, great stuff. Nothing worth remembering. Lots of snow, <laughs> lots of trees. Basically everything you would expect. And the one uh, that got me into the band entirely is a what waning silhouette this is one of the best canadian black metal releases i could think of um so these are two albums and two eps and to tell you the truth off the top of my head i don't remember which ones are the albums and the lps besides i believe this one uh, is a, a full length um it's four tracks they're pretty long and my favorite tune on here is by far nostalgist there's these really, really awesome and epic clean vocals in it. And it's just, the it's atmospherically huge. It sounds amazing. It's just so over the top. And there's just something about this kind of black metal, this kind of depressive suicidal style of black metal that I really, really love with clean vocals. Um, it's pretty dark sounding, but nonetheless, it's very tranquil, just like the style usually is. Um, they also just put out a single on their band camp uh, of a Towns Van Zandt cover. And you guys, if you guys stick around for after me yakking about my metal a couple months ago when I showed a lot more of the non-metal stuff, you know I'm a big, big Towns Van Zandt guy. Um, so, yeah, Begotten. Hope you guys check them out if you guys have not. Now, the rest here is all from one huge haul. You'll see a stack right there. That is the non-metal that I got from this haul. And then the rest here is all metal bands minus one, which is more of a punk band. Um, I went to a garage sale that my mom shot me a text of on Facebook Marketplace because she knows I have an addiction to buying CDs. Um, a dollar for three CDs at this garage sale. I roll up. I knew the guy from the guitar store I intern at or interned at before uh, they stopped doing stuff. And... He's a metalhead, classic metalhead. Uh, so I struck gold at this dude's garage sale. 
two of these CDs were more than enough for me to go to this place. But I got 51 CDs for $17. And this is a bunch of the metal that I got off here. So this is the score of the year, I think, for sure. Uh, first one I got here is The Years of Decay by Overkill. This is a classic Overkill LP from 89. Uh, the tune, The Years of Decay, is a pretty well-known one. Who Tends to Fire is a great one. Elimination is probably the biggest tune on here. But, man, is this a great record. I love me some Overkill. They're one of the few bands who has not put out a stinker. Uh, and I think that is quite the feat over a 30-plus year-long career. Next is my favorite Overkill album. This is Horoscope. Um, I was talking to the guy who owned these, and he said that, yeah, this is pretty much a general consensus on their favorites, uh, on the best Overkill album, but he said he couldn't figure out which one was his favorite, but whatever. Uh, they do an Edgar Winter Group cover of the tune Frankenstein. It's a classic rock instrumental tune from, uh, 76 or 7. I have the LP on my rack over there, but I don't, I don't care enough to go look. Uh, the tune Horoscope is the one that got me into this band if i remember right uh nice day for a funeral is a great tune live young die free is a great one blood money and the tune coma actually i think coma might have been also one of the ones that got me into this band early on uh but yeah overkill next a couple more from this guys this is ironbound i have not listened to this one yet i don't know what it sounds like uh but like I said, I've never heard anything that they did that was stinky, so that's a good sign. Next, Overkill's WFO. Bobby Blitz is one of the few vocalists who's really retained his capability, if not, almost gotten better over the years. Uh, White Devil Armory. Pretty similar on all these album covers for whatever reason. They seem to like this exact same setup for each record, but that's whatever. And The Electric Age. Um, this one I believe I have heard some stuff off of. Yeah, Electric Rattlesnake's on here. Uh, that's like a music video that's pretty popular on YouTube here. Uh, and it's a great, great record. Yeah, there's the guys there. He plays, the bass player plays this really sick Black Widow, BC Rich Black Widow bass. He plays it real low like he's uh, the dude in Suffocation, Derek, whatever. Uh, but yeah, cool. So that's all the overkill. Uh, I got some Ingve Malmsteen. This is his record Trilogy. This is such a good record. I have been sleeping on Ingve Malmsteen because I thought it was going to be shred meandering junk. Um, it's definitely shreddy, but it's really entertaining and it's an unmeasurable amount of fun. I mean, check out this album cover. How much nerdier does it get? That is one of the coolest album covers ever. Uh, but yeah, the tunes on here, one after another, gonna keep you entertained. There's a couple slow, more ballad -y tunes, but overall, tunes like Magic Mirror, um, Liar, and Fury, more than enough to buy this record. Go get it if you haven't. Ingve Momstein's Rising Force Odyssey. S Rising Force slash Odyssey. Um, I haven't listened to this one quite yet. It's a lot of stuff to get through. And slowly and surely, I will eventually. But, you know, I've been on a power metal kick for like the past year or so. Uh, probably even longer. So I'm just kind of collecting all that stuff that I can. And I'm all about it. Uh, speaking of power metal, this is a progressive power metal masterpiece that I'd never heard until I purchased it. I have a live DVD by this band uh, somewhere around here. I think it's just on my DVD rack over in my closet there. Um, but yeah, this is The Odyssey by Symphony X. So this is like a super long record. I think it's like an hour and 17 minutes long. Uh, but it's just one after another absolute bangers. It's got such a cool aesthetic to it. This album cover is really cool. I believe it's a concept album of the Odyssey, Homer's Odyssey. Um, but it's really 
it's really something that never leaves you bored because you know usually once you creep up over an hour uh as far as records go it starts getting a little old these guys they keep it really entertaining there's some really shreddy moments with some really cool progressive weird time signature changes and it ends off with a 24 minute epic called the odyssey and it's part one through seven on here it's just a great great record you guys really need to go check this out if you have symphony x a uh, couple albums by this band, Iced Earth, The Glorious Burden. You guys have all heard some Iced Earth, I'm sure. Some power metal, kind of thrashy, old school stuff. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. This one's really cool, though, Horror Show. Um, yeah, the aesthetic for this one, if I remember right... Uh, is there's a bunch of stuff with like universal monsters and stuff all over it uh yeah 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 you can see them all behind there the lp cover has a lot more of an expansive collection of the artwork where it's like an artist rendition of those universal monsters uh, i remember watching a yeah yeah here we go it's all over this booklet this is one of the only ones i'm actually going to show the booklet for because i think it's so absolutely cool There's the band. Yeah, it's really, really awesome. Definitely go pick this up if you haven't. I saw this on the Reaper Metal Productions channel back when they were doing the Heavy Metal Relics. And uh, yeah, so it made me interested. Next, I think this is one of, uh, one of the newer Iced Earth records. This is Dystopia. Yeah, 2011. I have not yet heard this one. Cool layout, cool packaging. I'm sure it's going to be more of the same style that Iced Earth is known for. And I'm pretty sure that this is one of the fan favorites. This is Plagues of Babylon. Um, yeah, Tomb Cthulhu is on here. Amongst the living, or Among the Living Dead. Uh, if I Could See You. Cool stuff. So that's going to be good on the Iced Earth there. Uh, we're getting near the half hour mark, so I'm going to start going a little quicker. This is Dio's The Last in Line. It's a classic Dio record. I believe it's the second record right after Holy Diver from 84. Uh, the tune we rocked on here, which is a Dio classic. Uh, One Night in the City, I Speed at Night, Evil Eyes, Eat Your Heart Out. Classic metal record. <laughs> this one. I bought this CD and the tune came immediately into my head and stuck there for days. Uh, this is like more of a hair metal kind of record. Uh, with some heavy metal leanings and some hard rock leanings, but this is uh, Twice Shy by Great White. You guys have probably all heard the tune once bit Twice Shy. Uh, it's a classic like radio rock tune, but come on now. It's so catchy. It's a really fun record, and it's an easy listen. Uh, Deep Purple, Perfect Strangers, kind of the return album from 80, yeah, 84. Oh, this is a West German pressing, so that's kind of cool. This came all the way from Europe over here and was in my stupid little farm town. Um, but yeah, this is an album that I know is pretty beloved in the uh, classic metal community, it seems like. Even for an 80s record by a band that started in the 60s, they usually start getting pretty bad by now. But I know people really like this record. Next, Quiet Riot, Metal Health another bit more of a hair metal deal uh but you know it's a good one to have in the collection uh come on feel the noise is what everybody knows this one knows on here but you know glad to have it next this guy really seemed to like power metal and shred this is Empelletieri with the album venom this is like a heavy metal band from california with some really shred qualities. I went and I was watching one of the music videos uh, on YouTube and their guitar player was just wailing. It was awesome. So I'm glad I picked this up. I've only listened to the one tune so far, but uh, it's definitely gonna get out of the collection and stick around. Three CDs by the same band. This is Sonic Firestorm by Dragon Force. Uh, just gonna try to get all the Dragon Force that I can. 
try to fill in all the spots. I know back in the day they had a little bit more uh, normal power metal. They got kind of nerdy later on. Speaking of, Ultra Beatdown. Some weird kind of weeby looking album cover. Weird digitized band photo. Bunch more like 80s video game looking crap. Uh, and a replacement copy for what I have. This is an Human Rampage. I have a copy already, but it's pretty beat down. And this is probably the most popular record because Through the Fire and Flames is on it. Um, but yeah, Dragon Force. Next, a band my buddy is really into, or at least he used to be. So I just picked it up to see if I could get into it. This is Baroness with Blue Record. Uh, it's kind of like sludgy, progressive, metal, rock, kind of in between there. Definitely for like fans of Mastodon and stuff, which I'm okay with Mastodon. I don't hate Mastodon, but uh, I'll give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. Next, I didn't realize this was in here too, or else I would have put them together. Uh, this is Dio with Sacred Heart. Don't know this record all that well. Uh, Fallen Angels on here. Hungry for Heaven, Rock and Roll Children. Not necessarily the most classic of Dio records, because I don't think that this is as beloved as the first two. I think this is the third one. But nonetheless, definitely earned a spot in the collection. Next, another kind of hair metal tinged record. This is Dawn Patrol by Night Ranger. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard all this kind of crap as well. It's just uh, catchy 80s hard rock heavy metal style stuff. This is 82. So it's still pretty hard rock in comparison to stuff like, uh, you know, like late 80s when like Guns N' Roses and Quiet Riot were hanging out and playing a little bit more heavy of that glam style. Uh, two CDs by the same band, Queensryche. I don't love Queensryche all that much, but they were cheap and I want to like them. So I'm going to grab them. I did like this Operation Mindcrying album. Uh, so I'm definitely going to have to give that another listen. And this is Race for Order, or Rage for Order. I have the tape of this, I think, if I remember right. Uh, it doesn't get much play. But, you know, now that I have it and I have the CD, I have no real excuse. Because ever since I got a different truck, I don't have a tape deck in there. So that's an excuse for me not to listen to tapes. Uh, four albums by the same band. If you would have asked me if there's like five bands I can't stand, this would probably have been the first one to pop up in my head saying I can't stand them. But I really don't want it to be that way. Kind of like Queensryche, but this band really, really irks me. Uh, but it's Dream Theater. I just, I picked these up wanting to love them. I have not listened to any of it yet. But I will get to it soon enough, and I will get back to you guys on what I think. Um, yeah, that's. I'm just going to cut it off there on those. So I'll let you guys know later on what I think of Dream Theater. Uh, two albums by The Scorpions. Blackout and... Love It First Sting, classic, classic records. Blackout's definitely their most popular one because, you know, Rock You Like a Hurricane's on here. Uh, when the smoke is going down, you give me all I need. The tune Blackout's awesome. Uh, no One Like You. Uh, Rock You Like a Hurricane's on this one, sorry. This one's got No One Like You. That's the pretty big tune on there. Uh, Bad Boys Running Wild. The same thrill, Big City Nights, is also pretty good and well-known tune. Classic metal, gotta have it in there. Next, a band I seldom listen to, but again, I tossed it in for uh, completionist reasons I, guess, reasons, I guess. And I do like some of the early stuff, like Mafia uh, in like 1919. This is Black Label Society. Haven't really given much chance to this besides i knew the tune crazy horse it's not bad it's kind of boring sometimes but if i'm in the mood for this kind of weird sludgy kind of southern rockish metal stuff i can jam it the last one for the night is going to be sing loud sing proud by dropkick murphys this is basically what i describe as diet folk metal um it's folk punk celtic folk punk 
You guys have all heard this stuff, I'm sure. Um, Rocky Road to Dublin, I think, is the biggest tune on this one. So, yeah. For Boston's also on here. Dropkick Murphy. So that is more than enough of a video for me tonight. We're creeping up on 36 minutes here in a couple seconds. Uh, and I'm going to cut it off here before that happens. So I hope you guys enjoyed this ridiculous video. I'll be back real soon. My birthday's this week. So I will have a lot more to show you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. Keep it greasy.